Dear friends of Belarus and Ukraine, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that the future of Europe, not just the fate of Ukraine or Belarus, are being decided these days. Now, while we speak, Russian forces are bombarding Ukrainian cities. It happens right here, in the center of Europe. And this assault by Russia on Ukraine is fully supported by Lukashenko and his regime. As it is from our territory, Russia launches strikes on Ukrainian cities. And from our territory, Russian fighter jets take off and bomb Ukrainian houses. And from our territory, Russian tanks enter Ukraine. But let me be clear on one thing. Our nation is against the war. Belarusians support Ukrainians. Despite the fear of another wave of repression, during the last days, tens of thousands went to protest against the war. More than 800 people were arrested. Also today, as the elected national leader of Belarus, I announced an anti-war mobilization. In the coming week, all our actions should lead to two results. Belarusians are no longer perceived as aggressors. And the Belarusian military refused to participate in the war or immediately go over to the side of the Ukrainians. I encouraged Belarusians to do the following. First, to spread the truth and fight against propaganda. Second, to ask mothers to prevent sending their sons, brothers and husbands to fight against Ukrainians. Third, to show disobedience, prepare a strike, disable equipment and slow down its work without harming the health of people. Fourth, strengthen economic resistance, take deposits, cash out accounts, deprive the regime of money. And fifth, to form a Belarusian corps of volunteers who are ready to defend Ukrainian cities, to be doctors or logisticians on the side of Ukraine. I openly told my compatriots that the sovereignty of Belarus is not just under threat, but that Lukashenko has already surrendered a big part of it. Therefore, we need to be braver than ever before. So as a whole democratic world needs to be brave to show that it is capable of protecting its core values, to make sure that both dictators won't be able to abuse neighbors without consequences. To stop Lukashenko and Putin, we have to act boldly and together. When I came to the European Parliament last year, I also to warn you of what we could sense already then, that the architects of our oppression will not be satisfied uh, with that they have. The tyrants are emboldened by appeasement, not placated. That when you avoid confrontation with a bully, you only make the inevitable showdown that much more costly and dangerous. Let's not repeat the mistakes of our past. We should make one thing clear for us now and forever. The dictators cannot be re-educated. Therefore, I once again urge you to stop recognizing the authorities in Minsk as neither legitimate nor legal. Meanwhile, I have announced my readiness to take the responsibility to represent the Republic of Belarus and the Belarusian people. Lukashenko gave up this role and doesn't fulfill his duties as the defender of independence anymore. And one more lesson from the past. Half measures only harm. Therefore, I call on the international community to impose the strongest possible sanctions on Lukashenko's regime as soon as possible. Both Belarusians and Ukrainians want peace and freedom. Today, not only the future of Ukraine and Belarus, but also the future of entire Europe depends on whether we will overcome these struggles together.